Welcome to my video. My name is Louise Raynan. Today I'm going to show you how to make paper succulents. Um, if you have any comments on my video, please send a message below or send me an email at skiptomylou at simpatico.ca. If you're in Canada, please shop my Stampin' Up! website, louiserainan.stampinup.net. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The succulents that we're making today are paper succulents. I've made them in several different colors and I'll explain that to you now. These ones are Lost Lagoon paper inked with garden green. This is Old Olive paper inked with rich razzleberry. And this is rich razzleberry paper inked with white. I'd like to point out the two different types of inking on these. On this one they're only inked on the edge and this one is inked on the face of the petals. Over here we have Mint Macaron inked with garden green and Wisteria Wonder inked with garden green. In this one I've also added a piece of lichen instead of just moss as a base and the pearls are a retired Stampin' Up! ribbon called Pom Pom Trim that I inked using re-inker and alcohol. So the first thing I do is cut out all the pieces that I need. This is how many pieces I will get from one sheet of paper. Okay, this will be enough to make one large, one medium, one small, two tiny, and two weeny succulent plants. If you don't like the weeny succulent plants, because I find them a little, a little small looking, you can make double weenies. For example, here is a double weeny, and this is old olive inked with rich razzleberry, and this is crumb cake inked with uh, garden green actually inked with old olive. I find the double weenies are a lot nicer. So in to make a double weenie you just make two into one. So there you have it. A double weenie. I would probably when I assemble these try to stagger the petals a little bit better or the leaves a little bit better. Okay so now I'm going to show you how to make them. First thing we're going to do is we have to spritz with water some of our pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. I use water and I try not to drench them. Spritz them lightly and let it sit for a minute. I've never tried this with alcohol. I would imagine the alcohol wouldn't work very well because it would dry too quickly. You want the paper to be wet enough to loosen up the fiber so that when you manipulate it with your stylus tool that you can curve them and you don't want it to dry so quickly that it forgets to maintain the curve and goes back into a flat position. <clears throat> Once I've let them wet a little bit then I move them over to a foam mat. This is just a fun foam you know, play foam, but it's attached to uh, a placemat. I just got this at the dollar store and cut it down to a size that worked better for me. <clears throat> so move all of the wetted papers to the foam with the wet side down. If you have it upside down, you'll know because your stylus won't uh, move on it very easily. I use uh, a cheap stylus. I bought a set of these from eBay. Um, there's four different sizes and each of them is double-ended. So I'm just going to use this small ball and what I do on the petals that are sh fairly straight is I just move back and forth on each petal curling it as I go. On these little ones I want to push extra hard and see if I can crimp them up even higher and then move them over where they can dry. Now sometimes when I'm doing this um, some of the petals will get a little bit wonky or bent the wrong way and I actually like that it adds a little bit different dimension to the petal. Sometimes I'll deliberately uh, be a little crooked in how I do this so that I do get some texture to my petals like that one did there. It's got a little extra curl to it. On the ones that are more round I'll go around the leaf and then up and back in the middle of the leaf. Uh, I don't need to do the middle of the entire part of the plant. I'm going to do that from the other side. So I don't need to uh, do it from both sides. If you don't have a ball stylus, you can improvise by using maybe a, 
wooden spoon from the kitchen, anything that has a round end to it, maybe a marker. Um, I used to do these with my finger, just curl them like this, push my fingernail into it and curl it that way. I just find um, it's a little hard on the fingers to do it that way, so I like to use, use the tool. Every once in a while I come across one that's dried and I missed one of the leaves, and so I'll just do it dry with my finger and see what happens. So there we go. Now they're all sculpted. This one has a nice curved petal on the one side. If I want to have a little bit of lift on some of the petals, I'll just go on the edge and that'll give it um, a little bit of lift on one end of the petal. Okay, so now that they're all shaped, I'm gonna leave them for a while in an area to dry and I move on to the next step. The next step will be to ink them. So for this set, I'm using old olive ink, and this is a Stampin' Up! color, and I'm using a sponge dauber. Um, this one says pear pizzazz on it, but it's close enough that it's not gonna contaminate it if I use it on a pear pizzazz ink pad. You could also use a piece of sponge, just kinda roll it up so you have a, a soft edge, um, a triangle of sponge, or even one of those triangular makeup sponges. My pad isn't especially juicy, and my dauber's already plenty filthy, so I don't wash these, I just keep using them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I don't need to uh, clean it off on paper. I can just go ahead straight to my project. Now there's two ways to do this. As I mentioned earlier, you can just ink the edge or you can do the whole leaf. For this project, I'm gonna do the whole leaf because that's what I've done on all the rest of them, but they both look nice. I'm experimenting with different colors. I've even uh, made some in this mustard colored paper, which is called Delightful Dijon. I inked it with a rusty orange, which is called Cajun Craze. I'm gonna try some with um, white with maybe some pink glitter or gold edges. Mother's Day's coming up and I thought those might be kind of interesting uh, gifts for friends. So you just go around each petal you don't have to go far into the petal because a lot of it's going to be covered and you want the variation in the color to show. I should cover up that shiny spot, it's not very nice to look at. When it comes to the small ones, I just ink the tip. You want to try not to bend your petals and straighten them again because you did all that work to curl them. You get um, dirty fingers from doing this. You can do it with gloves, but I don't bother that ink will wash off next time I shampoo my hair. And when it comes to the little wee ones, there's two ways to do this. I can continue the same way and just ink the edges, trying to be careful not to strengthen out, excuse me, straighten out my petals. Or I can just put it on the ink pad and push it in a little bit, and that uh, allows those tips to pick up a little bit of color. So you really can't tell. There's a slight difference. This one that I did with the sponge is a little softer looking than the one that I just dunked in the ink pad, but when the flowers are finished, you really can't see that. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be assembly. So I get my assembly line together. This is the assembly line. So I assemble all the plants in the order that I'm going to uh, put them together clean my finger a little bit. So to put them together, I start in the top layers with dimensionals. Dimensionals are just little foam spacers that give a little bit of lift to your project. And I'm just gonna put it on the, the largest size and the second largest size. And then I'm ready to assemble. So this one is going to be the base and this is going to be the second layer. I want to assemble it so that all of the spaces between the petals or between the leaves are covered. If you find that um, you try to stagger the petals, but if you find that some of them are covering the spaces and some of them are not, it means that your upper layer is not in the middle. So try to place it in the middle and that should cover all of 
the spaces underneath. Okay, and then one more layer on that one. And there we go, now I'm ready for the next, the small layers. So the smallest layers are made up of the pieces that are straight. I attach those together using glue dots. I start with the smallest one, pick up the glue dot, and then staggering my petals, I set it down on the second smallest one. Pick that up, pick up a glue dot, set it on the third smallest one, again staggering the petals. Pick up another glue dot, and there's my finished large uh, plant. So I keep doing this until all my plants are assembled. Some people try to pick up glue dots with their fingers and put them on their project, and that's kind of hard to do. It's better to pick the glue dot up with the paper and then attach it to your project. Here comes my medium-sized plant. Apparently I'm a loud breather. I get that feedback from videos that I uh, put on Facebook. I apologize for that. There's the small. And here comes the tiny. And finally, the one we call weenie. Now I find maybe that's a little too weenie. And so as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna make a double weenie by using two of these weenie plants together and double them up into what I would call a double weenie. <laughs> and there we go. One more. Might as well finish the job while I'm at it. The next step would be to use hot glue and attach a stick to the back. Okay. So, <clears throat> I will just get a dowel. This is the type of uh, skewer you would use for cooking. So I cut it into three to four inch pieces and then I'll use that with hot glue to attach to the back of each plant. Stand those up. I actually use my baking rack, the cooling rack. I shove the plant underneath and then put the stick through the rack, line it all up so that my stick is straight up and down. Now while everything is drying, you can assemble your pots. So the pot is made um, with floral foam. I buy, excuse me, I buy the floral foam at the dollar store. I use hot glue to attach pieces of floral foam together to fill the bowl. This is a handmade pottery bowl, so I don't want to put hot glue all over the bowl. And I find that this floral foam doesn't stick very well to the hot glue to the bowl anyway. After the hot glue, or excuse me, after the floral foam, I put a layer of moss. And once I stick my plants in there, it holds everything together. To hold the moss in place, I will just use a piece of floral wire. I cut about four to five inches, bend it in half, and I use that to hold the moss in place. The moss comes from the dollar store. It comes in a bag like this for about uh, $3. And sometimes you can get them uh, where they come with some lichen as well. And I find the lichen can make a really nice decoration with your plants. The last thing to do is to assemble everything. So I take my plant, take my appropriately sized skewered plant, and just poke it in where I feel it fits. And there we go. If I find that they get a little bit flat, I just fluff them up every once in a while. Before you finish them, you can give them a, a good hug and that will fluff them up nicely. And that's the finished product. I also like to put sometimes a little house from the Home Sweet Home uh, collection in there and call it a fairy garden. So there are my succulent plants. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment below or you can send me a message on my email account, skiptomylou at simpatico.ca, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.